about several hundred members of the Muslim community in Cape Town, South Africa, have joined the solidarity with Palestinians. The gathering to voice support for the Palestinian people was held Sunday at the Al Quds Mosque. The rights of others have been violated, and to the extent where they. Welcome back. Thanks so much for clicking. So we're gonna be checking out Muslims demonstration concerning this Palestine and Israel war. What these Muslim scholars have to say, what people have to say around the world. So guys, let's check it out. Several hundred members of the Muslim community in Cape Town, South Africa, have joined the solidarity with Palestinians as Islamist movement Hamas launched the biggest attack on Israel in years. The gathering to voice support for the Palestinian people was held Sunday at the Al Quds Mosque. Recently we saw how the Zionists act against uh, Christians. So it is not only a Muslim issue, it is a matter of human rights. It's a matter of where the rights of others have been violated and to the extent where they cannot live freely their religion. The attack is surprise assault combined gunmen from the Palestinian Hamas crossing the border with a heavy barrage of rockets fired from the Gaza Strip. And South Africa was also forced the movement for liberation had to take up arms to have an impact. The world community was called on to have sanctions against South Africa. And we find the very same Western countries that supported South Africa during the apartheid regime, oppre uh, 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 supported the colonizers and the oppressors of our own people in South Africa. They are the very same people that are now supporting Israel against the Palestinian people. The South African government on Sunday called for an immediate cessation of violence between Israel and Palestine. Some 1,100 people have been killed following the large-scale assault started early Saturday. We pray to all of our brothers who are being persecuted worldwide, especially in Palestine, the occupied holy land, which no Muslim doubts that it is holy, in the sense that it is the blessed land that is mentioned in the Quran, and that it is occupied by invaders who came 60, 70 years, and they betrayed the hospitality of the people who opened their homes for them and gave them food and shelter, and they kicked them out of their own homes and oppressed them, and now we know what is happening. So we pray for them and for their safety and for their success in fighting oppression and in fighting the invaders and clearing them out of their own land. No one in his right mind would say that, no, this is not fair. You come to my home, you kick me out, and it's okay for you to settle down. And if I try to get you out of my own home, that would be classified as terrorism or injustice, only mentally distorted people would think like that. So we pray to their victory and to their safe being and that Allah Azza wa saves our brothers and sisters over there. What's your message to the people of Palestine? They should know. It's, we feel very shame what's going on there. We are with you. You have to know. The Zionists are strong, we are weak, but God is on our side. At the end of the day, the Palestinian flag will be on all Palestine, from the river to the sea. Like I say, if anyone feels betrayed, and to my brothers and sisters in Palestine, I want to tell you something. We stand with all the good causes on earth, the oppressed, no matter where they are. I, like I said, I may not be an activist, but I'm a Muslim at the end of the day. And subhanAllah, we care. And it's a message directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Palestinians. When you talked about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you said that that was irrational. And so, look, you know, fair enough. It, we, people have been locked with their hands around each other's necks there for 3,000 years. But there's a problem there. And the problem is that People are looking at the landscape from a contextualized perspective, right? 
It's not just a piece of land. It's their piece of land. It's like your house or maybe yeah. your favorite shirt. It's like, well, you say, well, I have a favorite shirt. It's like, well, there's nothing inherent in the shirt that makes it your favorite. No, it's a subjective judgment. It's like, well, then is that a fact? Well, yes, it's a fact. It's a fact about subjective judgment. It's okay. Well, the Israeli claim on the land and the Palestinian claim on the land is a subjective judgment that's a fact. Yeah, it's it, like, so how is it yeah, irrational? It, it, because it is... The, the true analogy here, the complete analogy, is rather like we're about to fight over Elton John's glass, and Elton John was never here. <laughs> right. Well, how important is Palestine? How important is Al Quds for the Muslim Ummah? I think that first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran, in the beginning of Surah Al Isra, Ba'da Udu Blame Shnara Jim, Smilla Rahman Rahim, Subhana Ladi Asra Bi Abdihi, Layla Minal Masjid Al Harami, Ilal Masjid Al Aqsa, Ladi Barakna Haulahu, Linuriahu Min Ayatina, Innahu Hua Semi Al Basir. The point here being that, that when you look at, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing Al Aqsa and saying, Barakna Haulahu, that we have blessed the areas around it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it in the same sentence as Masjid al Haram mm. in the Kaaba uh, of the Kaaba itself. And we know that, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many ahadith, the Prophet sallam, has talked about the sanctity of the Kaaba, the Al Aqsa being the place where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the heavens, it's the gateway to heaven where he led the prophets uh, in prayers. I think that it's, it, the, the religious sanctity is, is there. Also, in the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, for example, وَآتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلْنَهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَلَّا تَتَّخِذُوا مِن دُونِ وَكِيلَ ذُرِّيَةً مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعْ نُوحِ So in the following ayahs, Allah links Al-Aqsa to Musa alayhi salam and to Nuh, suggesting it's been blessed since almost the dawn of time itself. The second point that's worth noting is that Palestine or Al-Aqsa itself, it's not just important in terms of its standing with regards to its, the, the, the Isra al-Mi'raj, but also in the fact that the Palestinians have been driven from their homes. If you notice when Allah describes the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, He talks to them, those who've been driven from their homes. And Allah repeats it in many areas over and over, suggesting in the sight of Allah, it's a crime of such a huge gravity to be illegitimately driven from your homes. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Khutbat al Wada'a, in the final Hajj, when he gives a statement, he says, Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa aradakum haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shaharikum hadha fi baladikum hadha. That your wealth, honor, and property, and blood is sacred upon each of you as the sacred nature of this month, of this land, suggesting that the idea of a people, whether it's the Uyghurs or the Rohingya or the Palestinians being driven from their homes is sacred like the sanctity of the Kaaba in the holiest of months, in the holiest of pilgrimage itself. Allah describing just how horrible a crime it is to be driven from your homes. And I think this is why there is this element of resonance towards this oppression that's taking place in Palestine in that this idea that the Palestinian was living in their home and then the Jewish refugees who were put under the Holocaust by the Europeans, persecuted by the Europeans, gassed by the Europeans, slaughtered by the Europeans, in the Inquisition slaughtered by the Europeans, driven out of Europe by the Europeans, came to Palestine, to the Muslim lands, where the Muslims said to them, we have a rich history of coexistence. We have a rich history of living side by side. We did it in Andalusia, which is objectively considered the epitome of what coexistence looks like under Muslim rule. Come and live side by side with us. The Muslims welcomed the Jewish population into the lands and the Zionist project convinced many of the Jewish population at the time, not all of them, but many of them, to lift a gun, go and turf the Palestinian out of their homes, seize their land, seize their homes and put them into refugee camps. The idea being that we took in people as a guest and agreed to live with them side by side and they decided instead to take the house from underneath us and kick us all the way out. Not only that, the reason Palestine means so much is because there is this glaring shock that instead of the world coming to an agreement that this is an apartheid regime that is set on oppressing the Palestinians, we see instead an, a coordinated approach from the international community to legalize the illegality, to say, okay, Israel may have taken these lands and stolen these lands and committed ethnic cleansing and driven the Palestinians out, but because we like them better than these backward Arab Muslims, let's discuss not about how to get the Palestinians to return to their lands, let's talk about how much theft can we legalize as part of a two-state solution. We don't want coexistence, and the sad reality is that 
even those who are sympathetic to the Palestinians don't want to see rights of return, such as Bernie Sanders. He was asked in an interview in Al Jazeera where he sympathized with the Palestinians. And then Dina Takaruri says to him, uh, but, you know, one state solution, let's all live together. And Bernie Sanders says, no, no, no. That, 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 that would mean the end of Israel. The point here being is, and, and the reason they don't want it is because they believe that in a majority state where the Arabs are majority, the premiership would go to the Palestinians, the presidency would go to the Palestinians. So I think what it means more is that as a people, not just Muslims, but ordinary people, in their inclination towards justice, it's glaring. This is an apartheid like you used to read about in South Africa. This is colonization like you read about in the French books. When we used to read it as children, we used to think, how did the world operate where these injustices were allowed to take place? Mm. And we see it with our own eyes. What the reason Palestine means so much is one, because of its religious sanctity with regards to its status amongst the prophets and it's mentioned in the Quran. Two, because of the people being driven out of their homes, the idea being that they should have the right to return to their homes. Mm. And three, this idea that instead of the world concurring that they have a right to return, the world is instead saying to the oppressed, while the oppressor is taking more lands, while the oppressor continues to kill the Palestinians and take more lands, the world is going to the oppressed and telling them, listen, we're never going to let you get your land back. We want you to accept to live in this refugee camp and we want you to allow this theft and legalize that theft itself. I think that when it comes to the Palestinian cause, the final thing that's worth mentioning is this. Palestine reflects the human consciousness of resistance. The fact that despite everything that has happened, the Nakba, the ethnic cleansing, the slaughtering or the like, the Palestinians continue generation after generation fighting for their cause, suggesting that the human spirit doesn't die. And I think one thing that every Muslim should celebrate as well is this idea that the Palestinian cause remains rooted in the Islamic conscience because it is everything to do with morality. When Ali Izzet Begovic, the Bosnian president, was asked, they said to him, you keep preaching this democratic state where the Croats, Serbs and Bosnians live together. This European tolerance of yours. And Izzet Begovic says, wait a minute, this isn't a European tolerance that makes me call for this. This is an Islamic tolerance. The European tolerance is the tolerance of two world wars, the Holocaust, the acceptance of a Serbian genocide because you're scared of a Muslim majoritarian state emerging in the heart of Europe. My tolerance comes from Islam that tells me to respect Ahl al-Kitab. And one of the, the greatest pronouncements of this is that at the end of the Bosnian war, when they asked Ezzet Begovic, what is the most striking symbolism that, 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 that strikes you? He said, notice how many minarets the Croats and Serbs destroyed. I challenge you to find a single church that the Muslims destroyed. Suggesting how, and this is why I link it straight to the Palestinian cause, the idea that it reflects, it embodies the morality and consciousness of the Muslim Ummah. That's why it means so much for the Muslims. That's why it means so much. It's less about the idea of the Muslimness of Al-Aqsa and more about the idea of justice and more about the idea that Allah's law already achieved the coexistence, it can be achieved again in Jerusalem. And the final point I will say on this is, is this, in that there are many of the Jewish population, the reason they fear a one-state solution is because they fear revenge. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he told the Sahaba to go and take their homes back, they said, he said, once you take your homes back, لا تعتدوا, do not go beyond that. Take what is yours by right and do not transgress for Allah loves not the transgressors. The Muslims are not driven by revenge when it comes to the issue of Palestine. They're driven by justice. Restore the right of return. Restore the land. Restore the homes and let's live on this land together because the way that Europe persecuted you is not the way the Muslims persecuted you in Andalusia and Baghdad and these other places. The Muslims are higher than that in terms of their akhlaq. And that's why I think that when it comes to this issue of Palestine in and of itself, not only does the resistance reflect the Islamic principles, but the goal that we're seeking to achieve is one that is noble, one that is coexistence under Islamic rule, because the Islamic rule is the one that guaranteed the coexistence in a way Europe has never been able to demonstrate or prove. <sighs> this is so sad, guys. I'm so speechless and I'm so heartbroken. As a non-Muslim, my heart goes to all the Muslims over there, especially in Palestine. I had thousands of people are dead now. I just pray Allah protects the rest of them and I pray for this world to end as soon as possible. And we've all heard from the Muslim scholars wishing them well. South Africans, millions or thousands of, let me say thousands of Muslims came out you know, praying and soliciting for for their people over there in Palestine. I'm so speechless, guys. All I can say is that 
I can't wait for this whole thing to end, guys. <sighs> this is heartbroken. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It really means a lot to me. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.